Hey guys, welcome to a brand new tutorial series and this will be a, a brand new channel to go along with everything that I'll be doing within C Sharp. So, the very beginning of this tutorial series is going to be talking about specifically C Sharp and pretending today, whether it is or it isn't your first day in C Sharp, because I've had this asked quite a lot so I thought I'd be able to cover it. Now this video is going to be a specific brief on the major things that you will find when you're programming day to day in Unity with C Sharp and it can lend itself in other areas as well. So let's get started. When you're opening up your Unity scene, I won't show anybody how to do that because I'm sure you do. When we're in the project, we, what we can do is we can right click, press create and we'll choose C Sharp script. And then from there what we can do is you can name that whatever you need the script to be. We'll just name this first script for instance and then what we'll do is open up and you will open up in Mono Develop or Visual Studio. Doesn't matter which because they both do the same thing. So at the top we've got the two items which are required to for all scripts in C Sharp. We've got the first the public class which is the name of your script which if you do change the name of your script within unity you need to change this here and it's a, a mono behavior script what i like to do is this is just for my peace of mind i like to move all curly brackets below any sort of encapsulating things so what we do is it starts us off with some basic voids and they're very similar to functions that you would find in JavaScript and what you'd find when I've done other tutorials in Unity. What I'll do is I'll start by, I'll delete those and we'll start from scratch. So we're going to start with the most common things that you'll probably find is that when you're writing your scripts, you're going to be probably writing two different types of variable type. And there's, um, you start by, you can either class a variable as public or private and the difference between the two is that a public and a private public is a public variable is accessible outside of this script so say you wanted to access a variable in this script and another it needs to be public so it can be seen elsewhere just imagine if you are going into public and you want to be seen by everybody that's what's going to happen private is as it suggests and you can hover over it and it will give you some um, indication that it's protected within this script. So if you wanted to keep everything private, it'd be private to this script alone. So keep things according to how you want to access them. And from there, what I'll do is I will get rid of the private for now. Because if we also keep it public, we'll be able to see it in the inspector on the right. So from here, I'll go through the most common variable types that you will find. So you will most likely have an integer, which is just a whole number. And in C sharp, you'd write public int, and we could write it as health. And we could say health is equal to five. And that's uh, simple. It's public, it can be seen everywhere. It's a whole number integer. We give it a variable name, which is health and we set it equal to 5. Now we could have another variable which is public and this could be called a float and then we could have this called health float and have that equal to 5.0f with a semicolon. So this means that again it's a public so you can see it elsewhere. It's a float and a float is a decimal placed value. We've given it a different variable name so it doesn't clash here and 5.0 and F just stands for it's a value of 5 with a float value. Again, like we've done, is a public and we will can class as a bool. And a bool can be either true or it can be false. So then what we could do is we could say if it's true or false, we can say for this instance it's true. So bool and you give it any variable name, any of these names can be anything you like. And a common one would probably be public game object with two capitals for each word and then maybe player with a semicolon. And what that allows you to do is find, so allow you to put a game object 
which you're referencing as player within the inspector. It just depends how you're going to do it. I'll show these in the inspector, so I'll save this out. I'll go into Unity now. I will select my FPS controller that I've already brought in. in. I will select my first person character, which is a class of my camera. I'll add my script here. And you'll notice that we've got a script, which is our first script. We've got health equal to 5. We've got health float equal to 5. Now, the difference with a float and a whole number is we can say 5.5 there. I cannot actually put a decimal place in an integer value. So if you want it to be more accurate, what you're going to have to true or false is just a tick box and then player is a game object that you can put in so you could just drop your FPS controller in there if that is your player and they're probably the most common things that you will find but in next tutorials I'll go into these more specifically and then you're most commonly going to start by writing new methods or what we call it in um, like JavaScript functions so we have void start and you always put um, two brackets after the beginning of that and then you can put two curly brackets below that and start means that as soon as the script is or the game is started and the script is um, actually executed it will execute that code before anything else then you have one similar update which is something that's executed every single frame so if you've got 30 frames in your game, it will be done 30 times every frame, essentially, or every second. And we can also have a different one. So if I put them in sort of order of execution, we can have a void awake. And void awake is extremely similar to start, but the difference being is awake is executed. Say we have this, this first script on our camera here and we untick it so uh, technically it's not running anymore on start or void start means that void start will never be executed but void awake is executed as soon as the game is started running and whether or whether or not the actual script is enabled whereas start is only actually executed if the script is enabled as well so this um, a way it could be used for initialization and doing things that you need to do before anything as soon as your game starts um, we can have our own custom uh, method so it could be void death so it'd be anything you like you can name anything that you want it's really dependent on um, the things that you need to do and of course I'll go through it in the future and below here again we'll say we can have one a common one void on trigger enter and we'll have it as collider and other and then we can add two curly brackets in there so from there is the only difference between that and JavaScript is the classification of the method and you have on trigger enter but you have the collider which is the class and then you give it the actual name that you want it to be referenced as the only other thing to quickly mention is with these uh, with C sharp you can actually make a you need to make a function public if you want it to be accessible outside of this script so if we have public void and new death for instance for it to be able to be accessed similarly with uh, public and private if it's void it will be pri uh, private and if it's the public void it will be accessible outside of this script so really this is just a brief overview of say your first day of learning the basics of knowing all the things that you're going to be doing probably on a day-to-day -day basis when you're going to be doing c-sharp programming within unity so you've got to remember that um, you're going to have variables which are going to be used integer float boolean and usually a game object there is many many more but i'm just going to things that i'd even use on a daily on a day-to-day -day basis usually it's more often start and update and then an on trigger enter but again i will go through these in more detail in the future so hopefully this gave you an understanding of getting to sort of grips 
and dealing with the most important things. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.